Hi, good morning everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Cal Sheehy and I am uh, the mayor of Lake Havasu City. I'm still getting used to that. Uh, so thank you all for being here. I'm joined today by Jess Knudsen, our city manager. Thank you. Good morning everybody. Good morning. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you brought us fan club. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Today we'll just uh, give you an update on uh, things that are going on in Lake Havasu City and then we'll answer any questions that uh, you may have. So it's a real free-flowing opportunity just to let us know what you're thinking, answer any questions. But before we get started, I do want to introduce Raymond uh, Van Der Riet, who is uh, the director here at ASU Havasu. He's going to say a couple of words about uh, the site that we're in here today. He's uh, hosting us this morning. If you stand kind of in the middle of us, we'll catch you in the microphone. Yeah. And we have to uh, be close to him for the microphones for the folks at home. So <laughs> we're really not that strange. But yeah, that was real instructions close. by the camera crew to lean in. And <laughs> yeah, so you see me awkwardly <laughs> changing direction. Um, yeah, my name is Raymond Henry. Most of you know me or know of me. And, uh, you know, I'm really thankful the mayor is here on campus. Uh, it continues a long line of commitment to the success of ASU Lake Havasu. Uh, the city obviously has been a great partner. The council has been a great partner. Um, and we have a, co uh, a community advisory group that's composed of, comprised of about 42 uh, community members. And we work very closely with that community uh, group. Cal's on that group. So is uh, Jess and uh, some of the people in this room on that. And we've done some really great things and initiatives. So um, I'll give you a, a couple of highlights just so you, know, you have some sense of where things are and where they're going. Um, we're working on an initiative with uh, MCC. Jan Woods is in, 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 the, uh, in the room as well, the local dean. And we're working on a, pro a project called MCC to ASU. It's a transfer uh, strategy that we're trying to uh, cement in the minds of students who, who go to MCC so that they think of ASU like Havasu as an option. So that's an important initiative. We're making a lot of progress with that, uh, a lot of that because of the leadership of, of Jan and her uh, group locally, but also up in Kingman. So uh, the partnership is working there. The other project we're working on uh, right now, and actually we were up at the high school uh, a couple nights ago, uh, is a project uh, we call Open Scale, where we are uh, working with the, the high school counselors to develop a concurrent program where students can enroll in university courses concurrently with a high school program get high school credit, and then have the option to get college credit if they do uh, sufficiently well. One of the campaigns we're working on with the community advisory group is uh, a fundraiser, and not, you know, this, this city is full of fundraisers. Nobody wants to hear about fundraising. But if you get tapped, if you get asked, uh, please support that program. You know, it's not about ASU uh, like Havasu necessarily, but it does indirectly benefit us uh, because students who decide to come to this campus and take those courses, then there is a cost for those. We are hoping to raise scholarship money to underwrite those costs, to incentivize those students to stay locally in Lake Havasu. And by the way, it's you. Mm -hmm. so, um, so those are um, the, the major projects here. Yeah, I'll finish with enrollment projections right now. It's early days. But we feel that we'll have a strong uh, enrollment, and you know, strong is relative, uh, given the small numbers we have at this point. But we're growing, um, so we're we're tracking about for California applications, Arizona applications, and uh, uh, with international, about 10% ahead of last year, um, and. On the out-of-state non-California applications, we're tracking significantly above where we were last year. And I don't want to throw that number out because it's a little bit uh, almost unreal. I don't totally trust it yet. Uh, so let's just say things are looking good on the enrollment side. So I'm very happy. We have a great crew uh, locally. We have great support here. You're so important to making this campus a success. And I'll shamelessly plug our Wednesday lectures. Uh, third Wednesday on, uh, of each month, starting again in January. Please come, same room, and we welcome you here. Thank you so much, and congratulations, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. and thank you for hosting us.
today is uh, an important day in history, and uh, I would like to uh, start by just remembering that uh, uh, Pearl Harbor Day and all of uh, American citizens that, that lost their lives on uh, the, uh, this historic day uh, so many years ago. So uh, I also want to recognize um, our council members that are joining us today. So we have uh, council member Donna McCoy is here. Welcome. And we also have council member David Lane is with us as well. Thank you. So I'm going to start right out of the gate and talk about uh, the question I get the most over the last 10 days. So that is the transition and how is it going and how am I doing? So uh, I'll start there and, and, and go through that process. Uh, the transition is, has been amazing. Uh, from uh, Mayor Nixon's days, uh, last days in office, he brought me in uh, very early on to help with the transition. So I was uh, up to date and familiar with all of the projects and the inner workings that his office was working on and his administration was working on before I took office. So that has been very, very seamless. Uh, as I mentioned on the day that we were um, uh, uh, sworn in 10 days ago, uh, the city staff is amazing. So if, if you ever encounter anybody on, on city staff, they, they're intelligent, uh, they're, they're smart, they, they're caring and uh, they have helped me a lot uh, get up to speed. So it's, it's been a very good process. Uh, we also um, have, uh, the, the only thing that is working right now is uh, they're still moving Mayor Nex and stuff out. It was 12 years of stuff. Um, so they're still moving that out. So hopefully next week I'll actually have a place to be. So uh, right now the mayor's office is my car and it, uh, it's not a very fun place to invite people to. Uh, but other than that, things are going really well. So, um, but it's, it's been a really smooth transition. I, I was very fortunate. Uh, to win the election in the primary, which gave me an extra couple of months to be able to really come up on uh, to speed on, on the things that Mayor Nixon's office has, has been doing. So uh, they, I wake up each day and they push me in the direction and I just go and, uh, and then I start over the next day. So I expect that to be uh, the case for the next couple of weeks as, as the transition continues. But um, I appreciate all of the support that I've received from the community and from uh, my fellow council members and also from the city staff uh, throughout that process. So, um, and it's gonna be a, a fun journey. We're only 10 days in. Um, there, there was an editorial in the paper today that 10 <laughs> days in they already want to let me go, but, uh, <laughs> but I, think they, I, I think that was already pre-written, I'm hope, hopefully, or, or talking about the universe, so, uh, so that's much better. Um, a couple of um, hot topics that uh, we want to talk about that uh, might have been in the media or you might be seeing on social media is uh, road construction. Um, is a, a really big um, uh, area of focus for residents today, uh, especially on Lake Havasu Avenue. Uh, they're finishing up the Lake Havasu Avenue uh, widening project from South Palo Verde uh, to just right before Industrial Boulevard. Uh, they have uh, widened uh, the road in certain areas and they're now uh, placing uh, medians in that area. Uh, that's where, where a lot of uh, the concerns are coming because of the traffic delays and the snarls and how am I gonna get into this business or how am I gonna get out of that business? Uh, but the reason that uh, we're, we're progressing in this fashion is for safety reasons. And uh, anyone that regularly travels on Lake Havasu Avenue knows that the volume of traffic and um, how congested that area was. This particular project, the one from South Palo Verde to Red for Industrial, started almost eight years ago. And so this is a project that um, is unique in that it, it was the last uh, funded project using federal dollars through WACOG, which is uh, the Western Council of Governments, um, before the Lake Havasu Metropolitan Planning Organization was, was uh, created by congressional action. Uh, they, these funds came from there. So it's, a, it's federally funded and so they, we don't have a lot of controls, we really weren't getting to at the end of the day. Um, and it's being administered by ADOT. So to, to complicate even further, uh, Lake Havasu City it did not have a lot of involvement um, other than the initial stages early on in 2011 to talk to neighbors and to residents and to businesses in that area. Uh, but now uh, the road's actually going in. A full eight years later, people are like, oh, I forgot about those conversations or I forgot we talked about this. Uh, but when it is done, um, it'll be uh, make for a much safer and smoother uh, driving experience for everybody. So if we thought that was bad, uh, we're going to start uh, an area that Lake Havasu City is uh, responsible for and in full control, and that is from uh, Lake Havasu Avenue from Mesquite to Swanson. So a very, very high traffic, high density area um, in front of uh, many fast food restaurants and retail shopping, um, and also the main corridor to drive over the London Bridge. So it's a, it's a high traffic area, and we are going to be starting that project. That project will also uh, consist of uh, medians at, at the end of the day. So it will restrict uh, left-hand turns into uh, different areas of, of that um, uh, stretch of roadway. 
this uh, project is uh, mainly a safety um, project. Uh, we've had over um, 85 uh, traffic accidents that have been reported um, in that area. Over a five-year period. Over a five-year period. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's really important for the safety, and those are just the reported ones. There's a lot of uh, just bumps and, mm -hmm. and uh, pushes that no one ever even reports. Uh, so we want to make sure that uh, our residents and, and our visitors are safe, and uh, so that is uh, uh, one of the main focuses. But in addition, that asphalt is failing. If, if you've driven that road, which I'm sure all of us uh, drive that, that area, you'll see a, a lot of cracks, you'll see a lot of um, areas of, of missing asphalt, uh, some very bumpy uh, driving experiences. Uh, so that's going to be uh, uh, coming forward, and it's going to be a challenge. It starts in, is it next month? Well, we've uh, just uh, accepted, or about to accept the traffic control plan, and, and so construction will start here in the next couple of weeks, and it'll be a, a few months of construction in that area. So thanks for your patience. Yeah, so I think it's supposed to be done by May, um, is what, what um, the, the projections are. Um, so with that, we should, we should talk a little bit about, well, why in the world would they do it in the busiest time of the year um, and timing? Uh, well, we'll get that out and get in front of it. Uh, there's been several community meetings um, about this project. Uh, the last one was about a month ago at the Aquatic Center. All of the businesses and, and residents of our community uh, were invited to attend. Uh, many of our council members were there as well to, to look at the areas, uh, see how, how the changes were going to be and what the impacts were going to be. And several of the businesses actually indicated that the timing during the winter time is actually better than it is during the summertime. And so it's, it's all a matter of opinion on when, when the better time is to, to do it for different types of uh, businesses or industry and different users of that road surface. So uh, the, the truth in, it, in an area that is so uh, traffic uh, congested, there is no good time. And so uh, we had to just continue on with our CIP and, and, and get it done. Uh, but we have been very, um, uh, uh, very conscious of working with the businesses in that area to make sure that they uh, understand what it is we're doing, how we're doing it, and mitigating any concerns that, that they may have, um, knowing that it's going to be a, a big frustration and a, and a big inconvenience. But um, I can add to that too. Yes. I think part of that, uh, the, the type of traffic, so we get lots of traffic with the winter visitors, but in the summer months we get lots of traffic with the Californians and those that are bringing the trailers, the boats, and, and uh, larger vehicles to circumvent through that uh, the construction process is far more cumbersome than what we have uh, during uh, th this season. So it's the feedback from the residents and the business owners, but it's also because of the, uh, the, the long trailers and, and boats and stuff that come through our community in the, in the summer, which would make it far more difficult. So uh, that, that, those are the, the two main traffic issues that we have right now. But uh, if there are any others, we can address those uh, um, shortly. Uh, did you want to talk a little bit about the hazardous waste day? Yeah, so uh, tomorrow um, we have a household hazardous waste day. So it's free for, uh, for all residents um, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. over at the Public Works Yard at uh, 900 London Bridge Road. Um, you can bring all your paints, your any household hazardous waste type of uh, products, uh, paints, tires, uh, fluorescent light bulbs, um, appliances, different things like that too. It's one of these uh, events that doesn't occur very often. Um, we talked with the folks at Republic Services. They can't remember the last time. They told me it's somewhere between like maybe like eight to 12 years ago was the last time we did something like this. So it's a really good opportunity to clean out that garage, get rid of all those things, used oils, all those things that we've heard uh, from folks that uh, need to get rid of these things. Um, and then rely on us. We're gonna be part of the contract that we, uh, that we entered into with the Republic Services is they're gonna do this for us uh, uh, once a year. So every December, look for this event. And again, it's gonna be uh, tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, uh, December 8th from uh, 9 a.m. to uh, 1 p.m. at uh, 900 London Bridge Road at our Public Works Yard. So that's uh, looking forward to uh, be able to collect some of those, those items that uh, people don't know how else to get rid of these things. Yes, sir. Electronic waste, old TVs. Oh, yeah, thank you, Dave. Uh, old TVs, uh, um, you know, old TVs, uh, computers, uh, um, batteries, autom automotive parts, antifreeze stains, varnishes, uh, all those types of things that you have um, that you can't normally uh, um, put in, into the, uh, the landfill. Mr. Clark? No poisons or pesticides? Yeah, so there's a few things with regards to that. No medical waste, no poisons, no pesticides, those types of things that they, uh, they won't be able to, uh, to collect. But um, the standard things you're gonna find in your, uh, in your garage that uh, they've been sitting there and looking for a place to go, uh, tomorrow's the day to do that. Thank you, Mark. Excellent. Uh, we also, uh, the newspaper covered earlier this week uh, about uh, decorations for Christmas along Main Street. 
Um, and we are working on that. Uh, it, uh, uh, we're not the Grinches. We really do want Christmas to happen. Um, so it's uh, <clears throat> when we uh, went to, we, what we do is we start with Wheeler Park, which is the central area of, of our, our focus. That's where we do our community Christmas tree lighting which, uh, ceremony, which we did last Sunday. And then we start working our way up the street. As we were working our way up the street and we were opening up the boxes, uh, we realized that the decorations that we've used in the past uh, have deteriorated uh, in storage and over the multiple years of use. And uh, so we were, we were trying to determine uh, at, at the last minute when we didn't, under, we didn't discover until uh, late into the game what we could do to solve that. And uh, we brought some of the businesses into the mix from uh, the Main Street area. And, and some of the communication, I think, got, got uh, misunderstood on what our intentions were and what we were going to do. Uh, but we are, um, we have decorations on order. They should uh, arrive in the next several days, is my understanding. Yeah, in the next couple of days. Yeah, we should and, have them uh, in. Uh, there'll be, you know, nice wreaths that, uh, um, that come off of, um, mm -hmm. like, the lamppost. It'll, it'll give a nice feel as you traverse along uh, McCulloch Boulevard in the upper uh, Main Street area. So uh, those uh, will be here just as soon as we get uh, the, the decorations in. Crews uh, stand uh, ready to get them installed and, and light up uh, the downtown area uh, for Main Street. Yeah. So, yes? Do we have the businesses on Main Street? Are they helping with yeah. decorating their own? Places. Yeah, that's a great, uh, great feedback. Councilmember McCoy asked if we're uh, working with the businesses on Main Street to have them decorate their own businesses. And uh, that has been a conversation <coughs> that uh, I know Jess has had with several uh, business folks, um, and I also have had uh, as well. We definitely encourage um, uh, Main Street uh, um, to, to lighten up and brighten up uh, uh, their own storefronts um, as they see fit. Yes, Bonnie? Someone made a suggestion to me one year that the businesses on Main Street should take the <coughs> trees that are planted in front of their businesses and have a competition decorating them and make that a little decorating event. Sure. Yeah, that, and that's then you can have the whole street decorated by the businesses. Yeah, that's great feedback. Uh, so we, when we talk with uh, some downtown merchants, uh, the suggestion was uh, to install or have uh, the businesses have a competition of putting lights in, on the trees in front of uh, uh, their own uh, business. And, and that's definitely a conversation we can have for, for future years uh, with some of those business owners. So thank you. Well, what the Red Onion does looks really nice. Yeah. That looks yes. really cute. Right? Yeah, that, that's a great that. example. I think the CBB is working with the new and reformed downtown uh, organization, and that's part of their plans. Whether it'll happen this year or not, I'm not sure, but they are, they've considered that. Yeah, that's great. Doing things for the downtown. Perfect. All right, uh, we have a couple of uh, planning things that are going on right now uh, that I would like to make you guys aware of. Uh, the first is a transit plan that is being, uh, it'll be actually be launched next week, and that's being launched by the Lake Havasu Metropolitan Planning Organization. And what this study does is it's a 12-month study, and it, uh, it aims to address uh, the transit issues and the transit needs within Lake Havasu City. So just to remind everybody, what we currently offer is a service called Havasu Mobility, it's available five days a week from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and it allows residents to call and schedule uh, pickups from their home to certain types of businesses medical <laughs> grocery shopping and so, uh, social services and the court so if, if residents have to go to any of those uh, services or businesses they can use have mobility at a reduced uh, rate it's two dollars uh, per ride and that allows uh, them uh, to get to the areas that they need to get to We've uh, 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 toyed around and expanded that over the last four years. Uh, initially, it was available on, on limited hours, four days a week. We've been able to expand it to uh, a full eight hours a day, uh, five days a week. Uh, but now with the Metropolitan Planning Organization's assistance and community input, we're going to understand exactly what the, the, the transit uh, needs are. So um, do we need um, uh, larger, more, more um, fixed space uh, uh, routes, or do we need uh, uh, more times or options, uh, what, what really is the need, and then what are those costs associated with those needs, and what's the ability and funding sources to, to pay for those. So uh, throughout this process, there will be several uh, public uh, meetings, and we encourage everybody to, to attend and, and participate in these so that we can really understand what the needs are and, and where um, there's any voids that, that might be picked up or maybe areas um, that we could focus on and address it. 
Um, obviously, we want to make sure that we're a mobile community and we have opportunities for residents, but we also need to, to be uh, fiscally uh, minded to ensure that, that we're uh, spending taxpayer dollars wisely and in, in the best use. Uh, did you have any, any additions on? No, I think uh, we're, we'll start that process. There'll be, uh, we have consultants that, that, uh, that come in to, to help with that process. They'll be reaching out through, uh, through surveys, community, uh, different community events to try to solicit uh, comment uh, from, uh, from folks. Um, as well as just doing some, uh, some research and trying to identify where our job centers are, where our schools are, where the, where the needs are. And then that process will guide us as far as trying to determine the, uh, the demand for, uh, for transit in the area. And then I think it's going to be important for us when we look at that plan is to, to start small and, and, and do uh, provide a really great service. And um, we'll, we'll perfect that and then we'll look at uh, other options. But I think some of the, the low hanging fruit, if you will, are going to be job centers, getting uh, folks uh, to, to work, uh, as well as uh, getting uh, folks to the uh, community colleges, ASU, the, the different uh, um, training opportunities and educational opportunities that, uh, that are out there. So uh, yeah, like, uh, like I said, Mayor, we'll, we'll start that process here in uh, about a week. It'll be 12 months, and uh, really looking forward to the, uh, the outcome of that uh, study. It'll, it'll help provide some direction on what our next steps are. Uh, the other plan that we're working on right now is the airport master plan. And unless you're uh, a person in aviation, you, you might wonder why in the world would you do that? We don't have commercial air service. Uh, but aviation is much, much larger um, than commercial air service. And it's very, very important to Lake Havasu City. Uh, there's, uh, not only do we have uh, private landings that, w that people come in with their pri private planes and jets to that area, but it's also a, a large employment base. Uh, there's uh, uh, several businesses that are based out of the airport uh, that, that use the resources of aviation to uh, allow their business to continue to grow and prosper. So it's, a, it's actually a very important asset that we have here in Lake Havasu City. And it's also required uh, by law to increase or to update the master plan every, is it 10 years? I believe it's 10 years, is that right? Yeah, every 10 years. So we're going through that process now. So if aviation is important to you, um, or commercial air service is important to you, or, um, or business um, uh, development is important to you, come be part of these public processes as well. Uh, this will shape the future uh, for the next 10 years, but, but these are very long range plans. So it's not a, a short-term 10 year plan we're talking about. It's what are we talking about 20, 30, and 40 years. Um, and as we are seeing right now with uh, uh, transportation and auto and all of those types of things uh, that are just now being invented with uh, you know, automation and driverless cars and some of these other, other types of services, uh, what does that mean for aviation? And so there's things that we can have in conversations and thoughts and, and comments that we can have during this, this, these discussions about things and technologies we don't even know exist or are going to exist, but we need to plan to ensure that, uh, that we have the right uh, um, infrastructure in place uh, should those opportunities arise. So uh, if you uh, do have any interest in that, like I said, please join us on, on those uh, meetings as well. Uh, we also have uh, a community dinner coming up. It'll be next Friday, December 14th. Uh, there will be uh, two servings. It's a completely uh, free dinner. We invite the entire community to come down. Uh, Santa will be there with, uh, uh, with some helpers and uh, um, gifts will be given to, to, ch to children. Uh, thank you uh, to Toys for Tots and some of the local organizations that have uh, raised uh, monies and or uh, done toy runs uh, over the last uh, several weeks to, to be able to provide these. Uh, these toys, but we invite you to come down. There's two servings. It's at four, four and six, four and six. Yeah. Uh, so you get to uh, uh, you only get to come for for one time. <laughs> so you might. It's going to be a good dinner, but only once, four or six o'clock, uh, and that's next Friday, December 14th. And uh, we generally get a, a really good showing. Uh, upwards of a thousand residents come and participate in, in this annual event. Um, it's located at the Aquatic Center, um, over um, off Highway 95. So. Again, open to everybody. We'd love to, to have you, your family, your friends, your neighbors come on down and say hello. You'll be able to um, interact with city staff and uh, your elected council members, uh, myself. Uh, uh, we'll be serving you and, uh, and love to see you there and, and help spread some of the holiday cheer here in Lake Havasu City. Uh, let's see. On uh, the list of what I'm going to do um, at each uh, Coffee with Mayor going forward, we're going to do a little bit of trivia. So just kind of fun stuff about, fun facts about the city and what, what we do and you know things that you don't really hear about. So we'll do that in just a second, but before we do, we are going to be dark in January. Uh, it's always the first Friday of, of the month and uh, that's kind of in the holiday week. And so uh, it, we will not have a Coffee with Mayor on, in January, but our next one will be Friday, February 1st. 
So it, it'll be fairly quick, quick into the month of, of February. All right, so let's get into a little bit of trivia, and then we're going to open it up, and we'll answer any questions and, and comments that you have. So, so some trivia. Uh, one of uh, the ones that I learned that I thought was I, I, you, just things you don't think about is on a highway, the passing lanes, you know, the painted white passing uh, stripe. How many feet do you think it is? Long. I know you, you know the answer. The, the width of the stripe? No, uh, the length of the stripe. Eight feet? Three feet, did someone say? I heard 17 over here. 17? 17. 17 is getting closer. It's 20 feet. Yeah, 20 feet. Isn't that, I, I mean, it's useless information, but kind of interesting, right? If you would have thought. Um, unless you're a traffic planner, so I'm sorry. If you're a traffic planner, it's very important information. Um, um, our IT uh, supports over 15.5 miles of fiber optics used to connect all of our city um, locations. So I, I thought that was pretty interesting. 15.5 miles. So, yeah. That's all. Yeah, fiber optic. You know, in, in a fiber city where all of our, city. yeah, this is just for city, um, uh, our city infrastructure. So city hall, um, the maintenance um, uh, building on London Bridge Road, uh, some of our fire stations, I'm sure, are included in there. Yeah. So. Um, the, um, the very first fire station in Lake Havasu City, well, there's a caveat to this. The, there, there was one at, at one of the hangars at, at the airport. So that was the, I guess, the uh, very first official fire station. But the first one that was built as a fire station for Lake Havasu City was on the corner of uh, Smoke Tree in McCulloch, right next to the very first chief of plea, uh, chief, fire chief, um, his Chevron station that was on the corner <laughs> um, of uh, McCulloch and Smoke Tree. Yeah. So both of the Chevron station and the very first fire station are no longer um, in service and there's actually nothing on, on that uh, plot of land right now. Uh, so the oldest serving fire station is Station 5 uh, down on Lake Havasu Avenue next to uh, Sundance. Um, so uh, a little bit of uh, trivia in that area. Um, let's see, the Havasu uh, Stingray swim team, which are athletes here in Lake Havasu, swim in excess of 1,900 miles every month. So 1,900 miles every month. Uh, this would be the equivalent of swimming all the way to Disney World. Um, <laughs> swimming also burns 650 calories per hour, it improves memory and reduces stress, and it uses every single muscle in your body. Uh, the Aquatic Center offers lap swim six days a week with several times each day. So if you're interested uh, in swim, contact uh, uh, Recreation Services and, and check that out. Uh, let's see. And uh, in Lake Havasu City, uh, we have two full-time animal control officers. Uh, they handled approximately 2,000 calls for service in the last year. So 2,000 times these, uh, these folks were called out. The lost animal report, these are animals that were reported um, as missing, was 709 animals that were uh, reported missing. We had, uh, uh, let's see, and then we had about um, 372 animals that were, were impounded. Uh, that might be like the equivalent of dog arrests, because I went to the Humane Society, so um, over that last year. So. Uh, let's see, this, uh, there are over 140 servers um, in the data center that used to host city software, websites, and various file systems for the city. So 140 uh, that our IT department manages. <coughs> so I don't want to give all the fun facts out yet because we have lots, lots of futures, but uh, I, I think it's just interesting to share some of the, the great things that the city does in a, in a fun way that you don't even think about uh, um, as residents. We, we sometimes take for granted that uh, we have roads to get uh, from our homes to our, to our jobs or to the grocery store and, and that uh, when we turn on the water, clean water comes out and, and you know, some of the things that, uh, that are so important to all of us that we, we forget on a daily basis. So. Uh, without any further ado, unless you have anything else, uh, I think we covered our, our list. We cover our list. A, a couple things just kind of let the public know. We had uh, a couple weeks ago, I probably read in the newspaper or heard otherwise, we had these uh, skimmers that were uh, placed in some of these uh, gas stations, uh, the pumps, which was uh, very scary. So these are uh, folks that when you're going there, they, um, they, they show up to the gas station, they open up the panel, and they're putting this equipment within, mm -hmm. inside the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the pump itself close it, they're in and out in like 30 seconds. So what happens is we go in there and we use our cards, we swipe it, and then that signal is automatically sent immediately to somebody else. We heard folks that were doing it up in Nevada, Pennsylvania, uh, the information gets immediately sent and then they're using your card within seconds of you swiping, swiping that, uh, uh, that uh, at the pump there. So a couple of things there, one is use a credit card, don't use a debit card. Credit cards, uh, you're a little more protected with regards to how that payment gets used and you can 
deny, uh, deny payment. And, and, uh, but I wanted to bring it up here because I uh, want, to, want to commend our, our police department for reacting quickly, getting out there, removing all these skimmers as me immediately after we, we, uh, we found all these. And then our PD is going to be hosting a training event here in the next few weeks for our uh, business owners within the, uh, within the city. So all our gas stations, managers, and employees, we're going to go out there, we're going to talk to them, show them how to prevent these uh, things from happening uh, in the future. So yeah, we, uh, we saw it, we're very concerned about it, and we're reacting very quickly and trying to do short-term and long-term mitigation. Yes, sir. Do we happen to get lucky enough to catch any? Um, we try. So what happens with these folks is they, they come through a community and they keep on going. So they come to Havasu, they do what they do. Literally dump them off. And they dump them off and they run. And then they're, they're in Bullhead City doing the same thing. These little skimmers, uh, they, they buy, they don't cost them very much. They put them and they're, uh, they're out of the community. So it's, it's more important to prevent it. Um, but we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying our best to work with other agencies. To we were a victim once. So oh, is that right? I'm here. Yeah. California. yeah, a couple of other things to protect yourself uh, in that area is if you're at a gas pump, uh, look for the weights and measures tape that goes across. If it looks like it's been compromised, um, don't, don't use it. Um, uh, it's, uh, there's usually just a little sticker that certifies that uh, weights and measures has been out there. Um, it's usually at a seam with on the, the gas pump. So you have that panel where they give you the key to open it up and then there's oh, that's usually... That's right, that sticker is yes. over that panel. So the skimmer is inside the pump? The skimmer is inside the pump, yeah. I thought it was something that went wrong. Well, well, there yeah, are some yeah, other. Um, I was told to pull on it to make yeah. sure it doesn't come off. Yeah, if, you, if you're tech savvy, um, you can you can t turn your cell phone to uh, Bluetooth because they're Bluetooth readers. Um, and if uh, something odd or out of the ordinary comes up on your on your options of Bluetooth connectivity, maybe it's something to be concerned about. Uh, if it's something you don't recognize, but uh, um, you know, just go into settings on your smartphone and, and find your Bluetooth uh, connectivity, and you'll see those types of options. Yes, Mike. Another way to reduce your risk is the phone. To never go to an outside pump mm. because, especially in the novice, if it's not a gang of people, they're not going to be visible from the smart the, uh, cameras, and they'll just stand there like they're gassing their car up, and the person in the kiosk will just think it's a person gassing their car up. In the meantime, they're opening that front of the. Of the and they're going to go to those pumps at the uh, on the outside, the outside because it's easier to sneak never, something in there. I yeah. never gas up, mm -hmm. and I've talked to two people over the past few years who compromised and both of them were in an outside pump. Yes, more. I am changing my way. <laughs> I, I always do that. Thank you, Mike. Yes, Lisa. Kelly, you knew that the banker could not say anything. <laughs> yes. Oh. Change your passwords and please look at your your accounts and and make sure that that you know, your accounts and be reviewing your statements, um, go to online banking on a regular basis, and especially if you've been compromised, change your passwords all, all across the board. So that's the best advice a banker can give you. Thank you, <laughs> yeah, very important. Yes, be diligent and look at your, your information um, and change your passwords, so yeah, excellent. Did you have anything else before we? Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention, just because so we get questions about this from time to time, um, city surplus items and, and uh, let the public know that uh, you can take a look at uh, the things that the city, so whether it's vehicles, old computer equipment, furniture, things like that, whether the city uh, disposes of, of items, we, put, we, uh, we sell them and uh, they're made available to the public. So if you go on uh, publicsurplus.com and if you go on that website, uh, click on Arizona, click on Lake Havasu City, you can also click on other communities that are out there that, that are also part of this uh, same process. But um, might be some, uh, some some things on there of interest that uh, folks might want to want to purchase. I got a flyer up here. Um, if you want to stop up and, and grab one, let me know. But publicsurplus.com and um, be able to maybe find some deals out there that that uh, the city can no longer use that may, maybe uh, maybe you can use. Yeah, I think that was everything. I all right. Well, we'll open up to any questions anyone has. I just have one comment. Yes. Since we're not going to be meeting in January, which happens to be January fourth. My birthday. I just wondered what we were going to do. <laughs> Happy birthday, Donna. Yeah, we're, we're going to celebrate your birthday. It was supposed to be a surprise, but, uh, but you ruined it for me. Yeah. I can actually find it. Okay. So well, let's get to January. Okay. Give me the day off. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're going to start with the day off. <laughs> yes. Do you have a location? 
information yet set for the one in February? We do not, okay. uh, but we will um, get that announced uh, right after the first of the year with the location. We'll send out press releases, we'll post it on Facebook, it'll be on the website, and then if you have questions, give the city a call and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, identify where, that we'll, where, we'll, we, where we will be in, uh, in February. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes? Can you give us an update on the Riviera? Sure. Yeah, so it's, um, uh, it's moving for the, the uh, question was an update on the Riviera. Uh, it's uh, a public, public, private uh, partnership. And so there's, there's lots of different pieces going, going forward. So uh, from the city's perspective, we're, we're most actively working on the roadway that uh, will uh, connect Highway 95 out to the mainland boat launch facility area that is through Arizona State Parks. And uh, uh, grading has begun, and, and what, what is the status of that? Grading has begun, the stoplight, uh, construction of the stoplight has uh, started. Uh, the city is meeting uh, all of its uh, responsibilities in terms of that project, and, and we look forward to the, uh, the, uh, the developer and, and the private sector as part of that partnership to deliver uh, on, uh, on their side. I know that there's some conversations that, that exist between getting some contracts done with the state, and they're, they're working on some of those aspects. So uh, we're, uh, we'll deliver our, our uh, part of the deal. And uh, hopefully we'll see the, uh, be able to see something uh, available and open to the public uh, probably right now in the next few months. So I know there's a few delays on it. We, we kind of saw what happened with the, uh, the state parks director, a recent firing in the last few weeks with regards to uh, an incident that occurred over, occurred over at Windsor Park. So she was a big, uh, big player with, uh, with, the, with the project. So a lot of things are happening, but we're working very hard to, uh, for the city to produce and, and to hold the, the private sector accountable for their uh, for their responsibilities as well too. So give us a couple months. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? I just want to know what happened over at Windsor Park with the park site, like, why'd you get oh. fired? So at uh, Windsor Park, uh, there was a $4 million project that the state parks uh, um, entered into to build some cabins out at Windsor Park. Part of that process included some uh, moving of some uh, different earthwork. There were some archeological findings that, uh, that took place out in that area. Uh, according to the reports that I'm hearing, and I don't have the, uh, the uh, behind the scenes details, but be, according to the reports that I'm hearing, that they were uh, some, uh, ignored some of the archeologists' findings and uh, destroyed some of the, uh, the sites that were out there uh, and uh, willfully. And so because of, because of that, uh, the director, and I believe the number two in charge as well too, was uh, relieved of duty by the, uh, by the governor. And so there's some new players at uh, state parks and. We're uh, reaching out to work with them as in the private sector, the developer out in that Tavis Riviera area is also trying to reach out and talk to, talk to those folks too. So we're kind of starting over with some new players out there, but that's, uh, that's what's going on. Yes, Bonnie? Does the city have an active strategy for monitoring, recruiting, and retraining physicians? Over the last few months, there have been several pediatricians and neurologist offices that have closed. Yes, yeah, so the question is about uh, recruiting uh, physicians and, and medical providers uh, to ensure that our, our citizens have access. Uh, the city um, of Lake Havasu City does not have an official plan. However, we do work with the medical community uh, to, uh, to encourage uh, um, and assist with their recruitment. So when, we, uh, when they have uh, a physician or a specialty that is looking at the area, uh, we're part of those conversations uh, to answer any questions um, and to assist them in, in starting their business as we would with any other business that wants to relocate to Lake Havasu City. Um, the hospital is, is obviously a partner and we work very closely with the hospital uh, to let them know what the needs are of the community and uh, to assist them in their recruiting efforts. And then of course we work uh, very closely with uh, Mojave Community College um, as they uh, train uh, folks to help assist uh, the physicians um, um, that are entering into the field. So the, it's a multi-pronged approach that the city takes, but uh, that is a, a private sector um, entity that we, ha we can only encourage and, and influence the best we can. But we understand the needs and the quality of life for our residents depends on, on good quality medical care. So we do have a, um, a concerted effort on, on that. And um, you're correct, we have had some pediatricians in uh, neurology um, and actually urology um, over the last several months that have been areas of concern that I know that they're actively working towards. Carol, yes. do you know if there's been any interest in the Hastings Building or the Golden Crow Building for new businesses? Yeah, so the question is uh, if there's been any interest in the Hastings Building or in the Golden Corral Building. 
Um, both of those are, are private holdings, and uh, uh, there has been some interest in the Hastings building, actually some pretty um, hot interest, um, and then it fades away, and then some pretty hot interest, and then it fades away. Um, so, um, and then the Golden Corral building, I had heard that uh, the owner is, is actively seeking um, um, somebody to, to be able to sell that to. Um, it, I think at this point it might be good to, to describe, um, and not that I'm going to be the bearer of bad news, but the, the, um, the future of retail is changing. And so, um, you know, although we all have a list of our favorites um, of what, what we may want to see or do or go or shop at, um, retail is, is just not what it used to be. Um, there isn't a day that goes by in the, that you can't read or see in the news that, uh, you know, very respected companies are, are closing their doors or restructuring or, or changing. I mean, and they go from Lowe's to Sears, to, uh, which is, includes Kmart to, um, Bed Bath and Beyond to uh, Darden Restaurants, which is a, you know always a favorite that, that folks like to talk about with Olive Garden and Red Lobster, and, and I mean it's just it, it, the the future of it's just different, and it's it's different. The industry is different because of us. So so we always forget about that that equation. It's just sometimes it's easier to get online and, and have it delivered, or it's um, easier to to have a subscription service, or it's easier uh, for us to. Um, you know, I think it's called click it, and then you go park in a parking stall, and they bring it out to you. Um, so I mean, it's just easier for us, and so um, so we're driving these changes in retail. So although it, it, it would be fun to be able to walk into a Bed Bath and Beyond or or, or uh, Bath and Body Works or into um, you know all of these these retail stores that people are looking for, we don't do it. We think we do it, but we don't do it. And so, and, and that's fair. I mean, it, if you really think about it, you're like, okay, when was the last time I did that, or would I prefer to do it this way? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's just a difficult situation. So you'll see a lot of, um, um, as, as the big box retailers um, you know, took um, Main Streets down, and everyone wanted to go out into suburbia and go into these large big box uh, retailers, uh, now it seems that Main Streets are starting to have resurgence with you know art shops and galleries and gathering places and places that we can connect as people, um, and now the big box retailers are shuttering. So it, it seems to to be an ebb and flow. And with um, technology, and, and no matter what type of technology user you are, we all use it every single day. Uh, we are we're thirsty for and and needing opportunities to connect with people. And, and the big boxes don't always allow that. If I can add to that, I had the opportunity to go uh, tour the uh, post office uh, back in June or July, so not during any type of holiday season or anything like that. And uh, part of that tour went in the back and they talked about these, how much just from Amazon, that uh, how much purchases that come from, just like Abbasu City alone. Pallets, um, full, fully stocked, shrink wrap, 10 feet high. They got 15 to 20 of those pallets every single day. And that was in like in the June or July time frame. I, I can't imagine uh, the number of packages that are coming. Again, just from Amazon. That's one uh, online uh, um, shopping opportunity that's out there. I can't imagine how many pallets they're getting, uh, you know, through the uh, through the holiday season. So that, to your point, Mayor, that's the that's that's our behavior as, as consumers, and that's making it more difficult to fill some of these retail spaces. But, but we're still trying. I don't want, I don't want yeah, to, to yeah. start with that and say, oh, okay, so we're just gonna let Hastings sit there and we're just gonna let Golden Trails uh, building sit there. We still are actively recruiting because there is, there is the right fit for the right, uh, right community. So we are still actively working. But I just wanna, wanted to preface it with that because a lot of times people um, ask us, uh, you know, I, I want this certain uh, retailer, or I want this retailer, I want this restaurant. And um, you know, oftentimes people think that, that we as the city council have, have uh, this, this uh, carte blanche approval process to say, yes, you get to come, or no, you don't get to come. The truth is we don't have that. We don't get to say that. Uh, but what we do get to say is from a zoning perspective, you know, lots or, or areas that are commercial use, we should have commercial use um, uh, entities there, re residential, so on and so forth. So that's how we can help manage that process. But we don't have that approval. We welcome everybody that wants to do business in Lake Havasu City. Uh, we're ready for you and we will assist you in any way that, that we can. Yes? Here's an interesting tidbit, not a question. Amazon right now is opening up brick and mortar stores. So you can touch it, feel it, buy it, and leave the store with it. So it's not so much doom and gloom for the retailers as it sometimes sounds. True. Yeah, good point. Yeah, it's funny. I, I've been joking over the last several months as we've been having these conversations that um, although I, I'm not old enough to have done this myself, um, I do remember um, my parents talking about uh, catalog stores. 
And so you would go into this little like 500 square foot uh, building and, and they'd have all these catalogs on, on uh, display and, and you would go through and say, I want this and so here's catalog. Yes, yeah. exactly. And, and they got it. And it's kind of, it was uh, online shopping before online shopping. Yep. And uh, so now we're going back to that almost, but it's just at a computer. So, yes. I know the city is not necessarily involved with the Humane Society new building. Uh, do we have any kind of a time frame as to uh, when? Yes. I know they're going to do different sections at different times. Okay, so the question is about the Humane Society building, which is uh, the building over on Sweetwater off of uh, Acoma on the south end of town, the old uh, BLM building. Uh, the last time a line I heard about them actually moving into the facility is uh, March or so of, of 2019. March 1st. Mar oh, March 1st, March 1st. Is, uh, it seems to be the confirmed date. So uh, they, they've been actively working um, on raising money uh, to, to renovate the buildings and they have uh, been actively constructing with uh, uh, contractors throughout our community uh, to get the facility ready. Um, it, uh, the last tour I had was about two months ago. It's going to be a state-of-the-art facility uh, for, for um, uh, the animals here in Lake Havasu City. Trivia fact, you should dig up how many miles of streets do we have? We might have that answer right here in the room. 435 miles of streets. 435 <laughs> miles of streets. 435 miles of streets are in Lake Havasu City. Yeah. And how much time on Body Beach? Uh, Body Beach, um, be more specific on Body Beach. I've heard... Keep people confused about what Body Beach means, so that's yeah. why I just want to get, get, tell me where you're going. There might be building condos or something over okay. there. All right, so... Would that take away the jet ski opportunities? Perfect. So the, uh, the question is, what's going on at Body Beach? So first I'm going to define a couple of uh, zoning terms, and then I'm going to talk about what Body Beach is, and then what people think Body Beach is. Yeah. Um, so uh, first, uh, the general plan that uh, the voters of Lake Havasu City uh, voted in favor of, uh, widely in favor of, in 2016, which was a public document that, that took about 24 months of, of uh, public meetings and work sessions and, and a lot of work from city staff and, and uh, the, the community put together, created a new designation called the Island Body Beach um, Zoning District. And so that area um, is, is confusing for people that call the jet ski uh, uh, watering hole Body Beach um, and think that's all Body Beach is. But it's now a, a full district that, that basically encompasses everything from a, a Rotary Park um, south um, along Highway 95 and the shoreline. It's, that's kind of the area. Um, there's uh, other designations that take care of the shoreline in the channel, both mainland and um, on the island side. So that's why there was a different designation of what that means. Uh, there recently was a zoning action that uh, came before council, actually on uh, November 27th, just our last meeting, um, and it was to change the zoning um, to Island Body Beach District, uh, which is the parcel of land that's just adjacent to the aquatic center. And not actually on Body Beach. Yeah, not on Body Beach yeah. at all. It's actually adjacent to Rotary Park and the Aquatic Center. Um, if you drive on Park Avenue, which is the road right in front of the Aquatic Center that kind of uh, U-shapes back into 95, uh, there has been a sign on that, that lot for years that say future hotel site uh, for sale with uh, some phone numbers on it. Um, and so that's the parcel of land. Uh, the action that came before us was to change the zoning uh, to Thailand Body Beach, which <coughs> gives uh, that land the ability to have a uh, certain height re um, um, uh, certain height lengths that they were looking for and also allows them to do what what their development is is eventually going to be which uh, they indicated would be a condo complex or a condo project with a hotel um, component to it as well uh, with the associated uses you know retail restaurants those types of things that, that eventually at full development would would go in uh, that site is is kind of <coughs> completely away from what people call Body Beach, which is the, the jet ski area, uh, which is on state land. So Body Beach, as we know it as jet skiers or water enthusiasts, is on state, state trust land. Um, you might notice when you go into Body Beach, there's a no trespassing sign that we just all drive over and uh, go in. Um, and so it's, uh, so it's important to mention that uh, uh, just because it is state land's uh, use, it is state land's property and they control it and they're in charge of it and it's theirs and they have not invited us in and so we need to be good neighbors and and take very good care of that so that uh, they don't want to come in and tell us that we can't use their property and that there are no trespassing sign really means no trespassing 
And so, so it's very, very important that we understand kind of those different areas of what it, what it means. But uh, there is no current development plans uh, um, uh, on the table that we're aware of for the, the, the area known as Bonnie Beach there. Yeah, State Land owns it uh, for that uh, to be developed in any way. They'd have to sell it. They sell it through an auction process at a time of their choosing. There's no plans for that, uh, that, that, that to occur anytime soon. Well, well, the city did because the state um, wasn't going to, and right. so it was a, um, a safety issue. But but uh, us being good good stewards of, of the community and making sure that we're keeping our residents safe, uh, we had to go through a permission process, and and so we had to say, hey, state, will you let us onto your land? Can we spend our resources? Yeah, and spend our money. Your property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and they, they didn't just say yes, thank you. It was uh, it was a process, okay. yeah. <laughs> and so we did it um, in the best interest of of our citizens and the safety um, uh, for some of the uh, the remnants and things that were down in that area uh, that were left. So, and I'd like to thank uh, Greg Frostley, our city, city engineer, for facilitating that process to get us the permission to, to do that. So that was not easy. Thank you, Greg. <coughs> any other questions or yes? Has there been any progress on the Vision Twenty Twenty Town Square? Yeah, great, great question. Uh, the uh, question was if uh, there's been any um, any movement on the downtown Callus project, which is on McCulloch and Quarryo. Uh, we are still actively uh, recruiting uh, uh, folks that want to come in there. Uh, so just to, to since we haven't talked about it in a little bit of time, I'll, I'll give a kind of an overview of what that means. Uh, the city purchased uh, the plot of land on McCulloch and Quarryo uh, about a, two years ago, probably. Now it's, it's been uh, been been a little bit of time with the idea of creating a downtown gathering place or a place to connect. It uh, was always intended to be a public-private partnership. Uh, it all came forward through uh, the Vision 2020 and uh, the $2 million prize winnings that uh, the community won through the America's Best Community Competition. And uh, we have been uh, working on finding a private um, entity or private monies to develop um, high-density uses like coffee shops, pubs, restaurants, uh, retail, uh, whatever that might look like from a private sector, uh, the city then would come in and augment it with open space. So uh, um, a, a park-like setting with high uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, um, a place for, for, for people to gather, uh, for people to congregate and, and enjoy um, a downtown area. Some added benefits for the community is uh, the connectivity of this ASU campus that we're on today connecting this to the Main Street area, uh, which then connects to a, a downtown gathering place that makes this campus uh, of ASU more attractive to students. And we can increase enrollment here, which would then bring <coughs> ancillary businesses and jobs to the area, um, and also help us with our demographic starvation, which was the main focus of the Vision 2020 plan. The average age of a Lake Havasu City resident is 54 years old. The average age of a U.S. resident is 37 years old, and the average age of an Arizona resident is 39 years old. And so those, those pieces of information are, are important because as, as the baby boomers continue to retire at such a rapid rate, uh, we don't have the workforce coming behind them to, uh, to replace what they're doing. So all of our residents that um, are, are retired or looking towards retirement um, won't have folks to take care of them. And so if when they go to the, the doctor's offices or they go to the grocery stores or they go to um, the services or the restaurants, there won't be anyone there. So we're trying to, to solve that. And we're trying to solve that through the growth of this campus, uh, through the growth of the programs at Mojave Community College, and uh, uh, through creating uh, 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 community spaces that are attractive to retain our young people that, that grow up here in Lake Havasu City. Um, and so uh, right now we're working towards the private uh, sector, the private piece of that development. Uh, conversations are still ongoing. So if anyone has any interest in the downtown area, uh, please reach out to, to myself or anyone on the council or Jess and, and uh, we can continue those conversations with, with that company as well. I can add to that just a little bit yes. too. Is that one of the strategies the city has is to be ready when business comes to the city. So we talk about uh, trying to attract different businesses, whether it's retail, restaurants, all those things. We don't have that control of when they come knocking on our door or they, when they look at Havasu. They're looking at demographics. They're looking at uh, other, other measures that ensure that they're going to make a profit and provide a good service to the community. Our role as a city is to establish 
a, a mechanism where we're ready when they come knocking on our, our door we can say hey you know what we have a plan in place we have the site over here and let's let's talk about it and it's important for us to be to uh, be ready and identify the right project at in the right location that's gonna because it's gonna <coughs> something that's gonna be a permanent uh, solution or a permanent uh, setting at that at that area we want to do something that's really special so we're, we're patient right now and waiting for the right partners to knock on our door we're also reaching out as well too so talking about business models changing over a period of time and of course those prospective uh, companies that were thinking of coming in all rely on studies they pay for as to the veracity of moving into our area but occasionally they really blow it I mean it, case in point a fast food chicken type place has always been uh, something we around here have liked and of course uh, one of my favorites was Popeyes and I get a big kick out of it because they turned it down because we didn't have the volume. The uh, Phillips 66 station up by uh, our place at uh, Shimawabe in uh, Jamaica opened their I can't think of the name of the Frontier Frontier Frontier. 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 Everybody else can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it's popular. A direct, a, if you're paying any attention, it's a direct knockoff of uh, Popeyes. And they do a land office business in that place. And it tickles the heck out of me. I'm so tempted to take a picture on any day in that place and send them to Popeyes hire me and say, uh, this is a business opportunity you guys blew it on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just Told you next so. time. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's almost impossible for a company to study an area and say, we can or can't fly there. You almost have to take a, 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 a chance on it. That's why Sam Walter made the money he did. He knew where to get, where to put it. A lot of companies today go by these kind of these uh, research outfits who are more than happy to take your money and do the study for you. But as to the accuracy or the ability of they to pick a winner, eh, they're kind of like political handlers. <laughs> you know, they, well, like, like Havasu's economic development plan as part of the Vision 2020 was to really focus on the businesses that are already in Lake Havasu City yeah. and help encourage them uh, uh, to scale and grow if, if that's where they're at in their stage of their business. Uh, Lake Havasu City has a long history of, of people that understand the magic of our community do really well here. Yeah. But they, it, it starts all the way back to Robert McCulloch when he brought his oh. chainsaw factory. Uh, Sterilite, those, that family, it's a family owned uh, outfit. They, they vacationed here, they had a home here. That's, that's so we have connections to those areas. So we're doing everything that we can uh, to the businesses that are here in Lake Havasu City to provide them the support that they need uh, if, if they're at an opportunity to scale or grow their business uh, to be able to do that. Um, over 72% of our small businesses in Lake Havasu City have five or fewer employees. And if we can uh, um, assist them with whatever mechanism that might be appropriate for them um, through, through different uh, programs, through the Partnership for Economic Development, through the Vision 2020, um, or through our, our, the limited resources that the city has, um, we, we're able to, to maybe get them to have 10 or fewer employees or 20 or a few employees. So, so we, that, yeah, that's the sim similar to what you're saying. They, yeah. they have to understand the market and not, some of these big businesses aren't when there's low hanging fruit in other communities that the study says it's gonna be successful, they're gonna go there. And look at, look at the, the long term changes. I mean, Amazon 10 years ago was barely listed on a stock exchange. Now they're the big wolf in the whole area and all of the retailers are going business, going bankrupt before that. Walmart is killing us. They're they're doing it. the small business owner who stayed with it, who stuck it out, found out eventually people go back to him, and he recovers. We have a unique problem here that, that a lot of people don't understand. We have no major transportation within striking range. So if you build a big company here, you've got a logistics problem of getting your product in and out. And rail. Yeah. And rail. We don't have rail. And this is, you know, so this is a unique problem. But the same token, it's also a blessing in that we have very little homeless 
uh, or area degra uh, degradation. We also have a retirement community basis that causes people to come here who are slightly more affluent than a lot of the rest of town. So it's a it's a trade off one way or the other. And I, I the challenge you guys have got in navigating that is kind of fascinating to me because uh, it's it's open season on what's going to work and what's not over a period of time. What's so that? far, what's that? We so far this town has done damn good mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. We don't have any of the downside, and we've managed to to navigate it and and go on the upside. I mean, let's face it, folks. We don't have Jerry's high-speed rail going in. We don't have the expenses of a lot of these silly projects that have been created in big towns by politicians wanting to make their mark in this world. We, you know, you guys have maintained a level logical growth pattern, mm -hmm. and it's working. Thank you. All right. Are there any other uh, questions or comments before we, we wrap it up? Well, you guys are taking it easy on the new mayor. I know, I love it. <laughs> what do you got, Bonnie? Okay, cool. I have three oddball questions that you can choose to answer or just lock them off if you like. They're from my uh, um, beautiful teenagers this morning. I huh. told them I was coming to bother you. So <laughs> their questions were, what is your stance on fem feminism? Is it a good or a bad thing? How do you like your coffee? And since uh, the president wants a border wall, would, would you like a border wall around Havasu? <laughs> All right, completely off-balls. So uh, we'll start with uh, how I like my coffee. <laughs> although although um, I have coffee with the mayor, I don't drink coffee. Yeah. So, um, I, um, so I, I like to have a bottle of water while you all enjoy your coffee. Um, uh, feminism um, is, a, is a real broad term. Um, I, I think that uh, we're all we're all created uh, equal, and I want equal opportunities for everybody. And uh, uh, what was uh, the third oddball? The wall. The wall. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. If we had to build a wall around Havasu, it'd be pretty easy on uh, the south end of town and on the north end of town. But yeah. no, we, we want to invite everyone in and let them show the magic we have in like Havasu City. Yeah, let people out. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> open the door when necessary. Uh, but uh, no, we we want to continue to have like Havasu be a very welcoming and, and warm community for for everybody. So. Well, with the oddball questions, we'll wrap it up. And, uh, we'll be around right for any questions you might have specifically, but thank you so much for being here and, and attending and, and uh, your continued support. Thank you. Thank you.